always, this is part of a series of videos. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend watching previous videos, otherwise you might be a little lost. Um, and uh, we are going to be building on the video from last week. I'm putting on a new video every Friday on the topic of HTML5 uh, and 3D elements. Um, and so be sure to watch the previous videos. And this is a the video, or this is the script from last week. Uh, we created a cube in our scene, and uh, we set trackball controllers for our camera. So right now, you can see I'm rotating this. It looks like I'm rotating the cube, but actually we're rotating the camera around the cube. Uh, I am left-clicking to do that. I can scroll with my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I can also center click and zoom in and out by dragging after center clicking. Or I can right click and I can drag to pan. Today we're going to change it up a little bit uh, and we're going to basically create multiple of the same cube. And we're going to actually build on this tutorial as the weeks come on and show different ways to get different results. So I am going to go into our script. Uh, which will be up on my website. There should be a link in the video description to all the scripts in this uh, series of videos. Um, and just to review real quick from our script from last week, we've been using in all our tutorials the 3.min.js from the 3.js uh, library. Uh, you go to 3.js, that's T-H-E, I'm sorry, T-H-R-E-E -E dot, uh, <laughs> let me say that again, T H R E E J S dot org to download the full package with all the libraries. And here we are using the minimal basic package here. And we also have from the same package of the script called trackball controls, which tracks our camera, creates some objects, and then we have an init function, an animate function, and a render function in our init init function, which is our initial function that runs. We have uh, we're creating a camera and setting its position, setting some controls for the camera, uh, creating a scene. We created some geometry, in this case, which is a cube, some material for that, and add that, applied that to a mesh, and add that mesh to the scene, and then we render all that out. Um, but we want multiple cubes, so we're going to do this by creating a for loop in this case. Now, well, actually, before we do a for loop, let me show you. Okay, so here we have our mesh, which by default uh, is right smack in the middle of our scene at coordinate 0, 0, 0. Uh, the cube is 100 by 100 by 100 units. So what I can do here is I can come in and I'll go mesh.position.x for x, which is left and right in the 3D view. And I'll say that equals uh, 100. So I've moved the cube over 100 units and then we'll add it to the scene. So before I save that, let's look at this. We'll hit F5. That's what it looks like before we change our script. We'll now save our new script and we'll hit F5. You can see it's moved over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy and paste these three lines of code. And if I do that without changing the X, you'll see it doesn't look like anything's changed. I refresh the page, but actually there's two cubes. They're just in the identical spot and the identical size. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, instead of moving it uh, 100 units to the right, which would be a positive 100, I'm going to move the second cube 100 units to the left. So save that, refresh this, and now we have two cubes. And again, when I'm moving like this, I am rotating the camera, not the cubes in this particular instance. So we have those two cubes. So if we want a lot, we can just copy and paste this code over and over and over again. You don't want to do that. We're going to create a for loop that will uh, do this for us. So I'll just going to delete those three lines we just made. And then I'm going to put what we have into a for loop. I'm going to say for, I'm going to say variable i. I'm going to say while i is less than 10. Um, and I should say i equals 0 because uh, we haven't set it yet. So i equals 0. As long as i is less than 10, continue to loop. But every time you loop, we're going to plus plus. This will add 
1 to the value. So we'll start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It will stop at 9 because we're saying less than 10. And we will close this function. Now, if we save this and refresh, again, we see one cube, but there's actually 10 cubes all in the same spot because it's looping here and it's creating a new mesh each time based on the geometry and material that's up here. See geometry, we set that as, th then we apply it here. We got material and we apply it here. But they're all going to the same coordinates. So what we're going to do in this particular case is we're going to create a variable at the beginning of our script up here outside of the function. Or I guess you, it could be inside the initial function since that should only run once. But I'll make it out here. I'll call it mx for mesh x, but the variable you can call whatever you would like. And I'm going to set its value to negative 500 to start off. Uh, so and then what I'm going to do here is I am going to set the value of x, uh, there is, sorry, the value of the position, the x position of our mesh to mx, which is negative 500. Now, if I didn't do anything else, the script would run, and again, we would only have what appears to be one cube far to our left because it's negative 500 um, and that would uh, look like one cube but it would still be 10 cubes so what we're going to do is every time it loops we're going to say mx plus equals 100 so this is going to loop 10 times it's going to be at negative 500 then negative 400 negative 300 negative 200 negative 100 0 uh, 1 2 and it will do that 10 times so we get to the value and if we hit F5 now we can see it looks like one long cube because we've put no spaces in between any of our cubes uh, when I move around a little bit you can sometimes I can see it, you probably aren't going to see it in the compressed video I can see a slight slight dotted line right there where some cubes are are touching so what I'm going to do just to separate our cubes out I'm going to say each time it loops add 110 to the value so it will be at negative 500 and then it will go to uh, 390 and then 280 and until it gets into positive numbers and we'll do that 10 times so now if I refresh we have all 10 of our cubes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 cubes all in a row and of course we can also adjust the x value if we want uh, we can say um, or actually, let's go. We did adjust the x. Let's do the z, which is up and down. So now I can say mesh dot position dot z equals mx. And so each time, not only will the new cube that we create move 110 units to the right, it will also move 110 units up. So we've saved that. We'll hit F5, and there we go. Uh, we have our cubes all lined up nicely. Uh, and that's it for this tutorial. We're going to play around this a lot more. We're going to start doing some random uh, placement of objects and rotations of objects in the near future, in the coming weeks. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. hope you found it useful. I hope you're enjoying all these videos. Again, there is a clipping on the camera that we set when we created the camera. So that's why when I zoom further out, the objects disappear because of the camera clipping. I uh, just wanted to note that. I've said that in previous videos. I wasn't sure if I said it in today's video. Um, so, yeah, if you're enjoying this 3D with HTML and uh, 3JS, uh, be sure to like this video so that I know that you guys like them and that you're enjoying them. Uh, also, be sure to visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And there you'll find links, uh, well, you'll find a way to search through all my videos, playlists, and also check out my social networking uh, sites on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and there's also a link to my IRC channel, which is a great place to come talk to me and other people and have a good time and hang out. Um, feel free to comment below. Questions are better asked in the IRC channel if you can. Um, and as always, this is part of a series. I'm putting out a new video every Friday. If you're watching the playlist and you hit a video that you can't view because it's marked as private, you don't need to ask me how you gain access to that. You'll gain access to it when it's published publicly. Uh, and the next one will be published next Friday 
in a week. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Also check out my Monday and Wednesday videos. And I hope that you have a great day.